breaking on Benghazi now. Fox News has gotten the first look at hundreds of pages of top secret documents relating to the attack, transcripts of closed door hearings with military officials. And those transcripts blow a big hole in the original White House story that the killing of four Americans was the tragic result of some spontaneous protests. And our chief Washington correspondent, James Rosen, with a Fox News exclusive now. These transcripts, James, take us to the earliest moments, the earliest minutes, when the president and his top military officers first learned about the attacks. What do they show? Well, you're right, Bill, and they show the chain of reporting in the early minutes right up to and including the President of the United States. General Carter Ham, at the time, was head of AFRICOM, the combatant command with jurisdiction over Libya. In top-secret testimony last June, Ham told the House Armed Services Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations that he was notified of the assault on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi within 15 minutes after it started at 9.42 p.m. Libya time on the night of 9-11, 2012. Ham testified that it was him who broke the news to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin Dempsey, and Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, again within minutes of the assault commencing. My first call was to General Dempsey, General Dempsey's office, Ham testified, to say, hey, I am headed down the hall, I need to see him right away. I told him what I knew. We immediately walked upstairs to meet with Secretary Panetta. Ham further testified that the nature of the conversation he had with the nation's two most senior military officials was that Benghazi was a terrorist attack. Panetta and Dempsey then headed directly to a previously scheduled meeting in the Oval Office with President Obama and briefed him accordingly. These declassified transcripts further show that throughout the Pentagon and the AFRICOM command, Benghazi was always known as a terrorist attack. Check out this exchange of testimony between Congressman Brad Wenstrup, Republican of Ohio, and Marine Corps Colonel George Bristol, commander of AFRICOM's Joint Special Operations Task Force for the Trans-Sahara region. Wenstrup. So no one from the military was ever advising that you were aware that this was a demonstration gone out of control. It was always considered an attack on the United States. Bristol. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We referred to it as the attack. Again, Bill, all of this testimony was classified top secret and is now declassified. You can read it for yourself on the House Armed Services Subcommittee website. Yeah, we had Congressman Wenstrup on our air last hour, and he was describing you know, what he felt at the time when he heard that hearing. And that's a guy with Iraq experience, remember. You know, he served yeah. at Abu Ghraib, west of uh, Baghdad. What is Leon Panetta saying about this, James? Well, Bill, we emailed Panetta's former chief of staff, Jeremy Bash, who is still very close to the secretary and received no response. Last year, Panetta told the Senate Armed Services Committee that he introduced the subject of Benghazi to the president in that critical early session with General Dempsey, and that he, Panetta, at that moment, was unequivocal in his own mind that Benghazi was a terrorist attack. So it begs the question of why Panetta, a civilian and a member of the president's cabinet, sat by and said nothing publicly over the next days and weeks to correct public statements like this one. Based on the information that we, our initial information, and that includes all information, uh, we saw no evidence to back up claims by others that uh, this was a pre-planned or premeditated attack. That it was, we saw evidence that it was sparked by uh, the reaction to this video. Jay Carney declined to comment to Fox News yesterday, Bill. More to come. James, thanks. James Rosen, good reporting there in Washington. Martha has more. Well, for more on this bombshell report on what the president knew from the get-go about Benghazi and the potential fallout, let's bring in Steve Hayes, senior writer for the Weekly Standard and Fox News contributor. Steve, good morning. Uh, good to have you with us. You know, it, it occurs to me that the meeting that happened in the Oval Office that was pre-planned uh, but that, you know, was exactly uh, timing wise uh, when the di initial discussion happened with the president about what was going on on the ground there and then you hear Jay Carney say well contrary to what some people told us about what kind of attack this was we saw no evidence that 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 it was a terrorist attack we thought it still may be connected to the movie so is he talking about the general there yeah this is pretty extraordinary and and to, to see the Jay Carney comment come some seven days later, six, seven days later, uh, denying that there was any evidence. He said, we've looked at all the information. There's no evidence to suggest that this was any kind of a pre-planned attack or, or a terrorist attack. Uh, is pretty extraordinary. Let's, let's recap who was telling the president, who was telling senior Obama administration officials that this was a terrorist attack. We now know, because of the good reporting from Jennifer Griffin and James Rosen, that this was the view of senior military leaders, uh, the testimony that, that Bill was just talking about. We also know that on September 
September 12th, the CIA station chief in Libya sent back a memo to the United States pointing out that this was indeed a terrorist attack and naming uh, certain groups that he thought were likely involved in that terrorist attack. So you have the Pentagon and the CIA. We also know from emails that had been previously released that State Department officials on September 12th were emailing about the fact that this was an Ansar al-Sharia-led attack. So we now have three, the three relevant government agencies all declaring one day after September 11th that this had been a terrorist attack, and yet you have the administration, as the clip from Jay Carney shows, and there are many others like it, you have the administration pretending that this was all about this spontaneous video. Yeah, I mean, your mind goes to a couple of things. Mine does to the Robert Gates book in terms of the suggestion that the inner circle at the White House is more knowledgeable and understands more about what's going on in the world and what their uh, political um, agenda might be and how they want to present things than perhaps the military. Yeah, I think that's certainly consistent with what we've seen from Robert Gates book, but really what we've seen through from this administration going back five years. I mean, if you look at the way that the Obama administration has handled these kinds of incidents, whether it was the Christmas Day bombing, whether it was the Times Square attack, whether it was the attacks in Benghazi, there's an inclination always to choose the option that leaves the administration mm -hmm. least at fault. So with the Christmas Day attack, you know, this was an isolated extremist right. for several days, even though we knew that it wasn't. For the Times Square attack, it was a lone incident, even though we knew that the attacker had had ties to the Pakistani Taliban. In Benghazi, you know, the choice was this was a video. This was not a pre-planned attack. They didn't have Al Qaeda ties, et cetera, et cetera. The administration seems, at least the White House, seems always to choose the explanation that leaves them least to blame. Yeah, downplay uh, in many cases uh, appears to be what happens. Steve, thank you very much. We'll see you later. So we are asking our viewers now, in light of what we're learning, what do you think? Do these revelations change your mind about Benghazi? You can send us a tweet this hour at Bill Hemmer, at Martha McCallum, and we'll share some of your ideas and some of your thoughts a bit later. A lot to chew on there, right? It certainly is, yeah. We'll see whether or not there's more to come on that. Yep.